how have the first 100 days gone? Well, why don't we ask Mayor Chow herself? Joining us live in studio this morning is Mayor Olivia Chow. Good to see you, Mayor Chow. Thanks for joining us this morning. 100 days in, hope you're feeling good. We're wondering, though, first of all, what keeps you up at night? What, what, do, you, what do you concern yourself with? <laughs> People sleeping on the street yeah. in uh, parks. So making life affordable, building housing, housing the folks into shelters and then be able to uh, give them hope to find an apartment. So we, we managed to find some money with the provincial government so far to create something called rent supplement. So over 2,000 people will soon be able, well, 600 of them already have, uh, move from a shelter into a place they can call a permanent home. So that's something that I thought, okay, we can do a lot more of that because building affordable housing, which I want to do, takes a few years. Sure does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but immediately we need something, right? Mm -hmm. So we are put, we're purchasing buildings so that we can um, protect them, turn it to affordable housing so that the tenants won't get renovated, demo evicted, mm -hmm. Um, because we've seen a lot of that happening. You've talked about it a lot, but plans like this can't be done with just the city alone. You need help from the feds and from the province as well. Talked a little bit about fostering those relationships over the last 100 days. A lot of critics of you when you first got elected said it wouldn't be possible, especially with the province. But now things seem to be looking up. What a perfect question thank you for that yes we cannot do it alone we're like you know the lowest level of government uh so we've met with uh, i've met with premier ford we have a working group uh we're looking at uh different revenue tools we are working with the federal government say please take care of some of the refugees there's huge number of refugees coming to Toronto, partially because of war, famine, climate change, um, um, gay bashing, uh, all of those are costing a lot of people coming to Toronto. And they are on the street just down from you, sometimes mm -hmm. sleeping out. And as you know, it's getting cold. So we're saying to other levels of government, where there's building housing, provide better public transit, all of those important things, please join with us and step up. So I know the working group with the province, we're supposed to hear some kind of report, uh, you know, sometime next month, maybe late in November about that. I'm wondering if you can give us any hints of what you've heard so far about how that's going and how that is sort of shaping up for the Toronto's books. But also wonder if you can answer the question about the federal money that we understand hasn't flowed yet. And there seems to be some disagreement between mm -hmm. Toronto and the feds as to when we should expect the money, when we will get the money, and even whether there'll be more. Uh, the minister, immigration minister, <clears throat> said, uh, uh, send us the receipts. Hmm. We did. We have. Oh. Um, we've spent a lot of money housing refugees. We created 250 new shelters. Uh, we provided close to a million dollars to the different churches that have been housing them. Lots more to do. And um, so we are asking. So that conversation is continued. But in terms of the provincial government, uh, the meeting, well, at the staff are meeting twice a week, mm -hmm. <laughs> working really hard. And um, you get an interim update uh, end of October, okay. which is coming oh, soon. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But what I'm doing is actually meeting with all the big city mayors today for the Ontario team. The Ontario big city mayor is meeting. I'm joining them. Next Tuesday, the big uh, mayor caucus across Canada. So mayors from coast to coast, Halifax, Vancouver, um, Northwest Territory, we all coming together uh, to say to the federal government, also, we need help. Because if just Toronto asking, it won't work, right? But at the meantime, we're not waiting. On public transit, we've restored the cuts that you've seen in the last um, six, seven months. We've brought back all the buses, brought it back to 98% of the uh, uh, pre-pandemic level. Uh, we hired 170 more staff so to make the station safer, better customer services. All of those things we need to do now so that more people can take public transit, mm -hmm. less congestion Perhaps on the street. The I know, yeah. It's, yeah. it's pretty jammed up. Yeah. There's 
a lot of the issues that we first ran on when you were elected, it seems like over the last 100 days have kind of shifted and evolved. One of those being public safety. It was crime, especially on the TTC, was a big talking point. But now 100 days later, we're hearing from Police Chief Marin Demkew that hate crimes mm -hmm. are on the rise, especially in light of the Israel-Hamas war. So in this situation and others, seeing how these conflicts have changed over the course of these 100 days, how are you tackling that? How are you juggling those things? And how do you anticipate that continuing over your next year? Mm -hmm. We, as I said, <clears throat> we've hired 170 TDC staff so that there's uh, more eyes and ears, better customer service, but making the stations, subway stations, buses safer. Okay, But you're absolutely right. Hate crime has shot up. Um, so last week at City Council, we passed a motion. The chief and our team is going to put together a one-stop shop at one place, online resources. So if you experience hate crime, you know where to go. And if you think that you would in a workplace or places of worship, there is a place for you to learn how to prevent it. We've also um, a beginning to uh, work with different places to establish safety zones on places of worship, religious schools, because those are places that sometimes you, you see hate crimes happening. And what the chief has been doing, um, he's been placing a lot more officers out, and uh, several high-profile ones, they found a, uh, like, for example, um, defacing a mosque. Mm -hmm. They caught the guy, right? And um, <clears throat> the three young people were harassing a Jewish student. <clears throat> they caught the, those guys too. So um, prevention, uh, immediate action, and one-stop shop to say. But at the end of the day, we understand the anguish and the the grief um, people are experiencing here in Toronto. When you watch the news, it's just like your heart breaks, right? So we're looking for ways to bring people together to say. How can we grieve? How can we be empathetic? How can we reduce the, uh, in Toronto anyway, the, the hate that comes up? Mm -hmm. um, looking for suggestions, so if you have any. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have said you're open to you know, hearing That's from right. everyone, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. City Hall's door is open. Yeah. We want to hear best ideas. So, uh, Mayor Child, let's sort of end on, on maybe a little more upbeat note and, and talk about the job itself as mayor 100 days in. What surprised you the most? What sort of came out of left field and said, boy, I didn't expect that was going to come up or that, 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 that to happen? I found some amazing group of seven paintings. Uh, Lauren Harris in the uh, yeah, really? we, there's an archive of paintings. Not on display. Not on display. So I was crawling around with my flashlight on my phone and and found this painting. I thought, wow. <laughs> yeah, so I found three of them and brought them up. Uh, it's now in the uh, in City Hall. I love the idea of thinking yeah. about Mayor Chow on her hands <laughs> and knees with her yeah. cell flashlight yeah. digging around for hidden artwork. Yeah. yeah, apparently no other mayors have yeah. done that before, but why, why not? Another first for you. Listen, Mayor Chow, congrats on the first 100 days. Thanks for being here, and I'm sure we'll be talking soon. Pleasure talking to you this morning. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Yeah.